Hello and welcome back to Another Worlds. We're heading out to Fallbrook Landing Pad. And I rerolled my driver just as I said that I will. So now it doesn't look trash. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure why I didn't do that before. I, I, I ended up using the newest driver because... Uh, because I was having issues, but I don't think that had any effect in fixing it. Uh, not, not related to this game, but I just decided to go for it because I was having issues, but not not because that they, but it didn't help honestly. And and uh, apparently it might give you better FPS if you if you use it. Uh, when it comes to this game, I I, I can't really. It's it's really hard to tell. Maybe not a significant amount, but uh, at least it works works well because it seems like it, it, I couldn't see too much too many differences or something that really stood out other than this uh, whole black character model uh, so yeah and of course the crashing I think the crashing was caused caused by it so hopefully we're gonna be just fine you still see the mushroom trees actually the mushroom trees look better, don't they? They kind of do. Am I imagining it? I don't know. I'm usually not super demanding when it comes to graphics, so it doesn't take too much to impress me. So we are at Fallbrook, but that's not where we want to be. And wow, look at that. I know that's gonna come in handy somewhere. And uh, yeah. I'm not super invested in Naoka's story. And uh, it's, it's fine. So it seems like when it comes to companions, I mean, F Felix is just, I don't know. I kind of like Felix, but at the same time, it's, it's not super deep feels like so yeah I don't know I maybe we're just gonna take Vicar Max on some missions after his uh, last after his personal quest I'm not sure if his personal quest is concluded after that I'm a little bit curious to take him and see if that actually changes his uh, his behavior I don't think it would significantly but it could be interesting. Because then they would need to uh, record lines for him twice. Of course, not all the way. Not all the way. But... But uh, for the rest of the game. So... Whew. Here we go. Or maybe you would have to have sense. generic lines that works with wow. both. I'm ready. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Here we yeah. go. Come on. Don't worry, this is easy. Uh, yeah, we have enough carry, uh, just carry weight, space. Let's go. Empty sword hive. Space choice! I'm loving this game. Uh, sure. I have no idea why I didn't reroll the drivers before. Just being big dumb. It took me no time whatsoever. <laughs> Sorry about that. For anyone who was uh, uh, seriously put up by that. It didn't bother me. The crashing bothered me more than the occasional black character models in the inventory screen. And uh, the leaving the mission screen. Like It just really took up no time whatsoever. What we got here are a few bugs. Actually, we should just stand our ground. Perfection. I'm on my way. Okay, the auto sniper still works. Uh. 
place to well, glance? this is the spot. You know, I thought I'd be angry. I thought I'd storm in here in a rage and exterminate all these bugs and everything would be all right in the end. But I ain't. I'm mostly just empty. A little sad, maybe. The first night Hayes and I spent in here, we knew it was home. It's safe. It's got a nice chill to it. But mostly, it doesn't stink of sulfur. I bet you here. I hate that. <laughs> yeah, I bet you there. Uh, I hate that smell. Monarch folks often joke about it. Not because of the smell or the grittiness it leaves in your throat. Not because of the headaches or the coughing. It's because there's no escaping it. It's life here. And there ain't anything you can do about it. But here, somehow the sulfur never made it. The nights we spent in here felt like vacations. So we started building. You built all of this? The base? We hauled in steel. Hired sublight folk to help. That's how we met Anders and Opal. They stuck around after our contract was up. Opal liked camping. Anders liked chasing her tail. Four of us for a while, scraping together what bits we could to build our home. Then came Rebecca, a sawbones out of the Cascadia survivors, who took a kindness to Hayes. And Clara, her little sister. I'll admit I wasn't keen on taking her on at first, but for a teenager, she was surprisingly capable. A teenager out here in modern monarch wilderness. You got a young girl killed? Um, probably I shouldn't phrase it that way. Believe me, I had my complaints. She had a head for numbers, helped us trade hides for food and materials, negotiated contracts, turned out to be mighty useful. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, and me. Six folks, one name, one family, Charon. Despite Monarch trying to kill us day in and day out, we managed to belong. Very interesting. Six, a family. That's kind of what we have on the ship. I'm sorry they aren't here to see us kick some manty ass. Let's do this. You, you were a family, and I'm sorry they are gone, Nyuka. Me too, Captain. But I'm starting to think that maybe I found another. Now let's get to shooting before I get all sentimental. Hmm. Here they come! Oh shit! Moving. How about shoot? Maybe one of them survived. So we got four necklaces. I think I have it all. I can make this easier for myself. Great work. Not, this is fine. Ah, uh, seems like this is kind of it. On my way. I wish these were more auspicious circumstances, but at least we're all here. This bringing them together, burying them. This is the kind of thing Hayes would have done. That makes it stupid. By all accounts, we should have left well enough alone, but that also makes it right. Captain, thank you.
I just can't stand by while Mantic Queen's room free. Uh, you're welcome, Nayuka. You mind if we rest a spell before we head out? What? I'd, I'd like to bury Opal and Clara proper before I lay everyone's medallions to rest. I mean, by rest, I mean just... We can take our time, but like, no sleepy. I mean, this place is still creepy. Of course, although I think you should hold on to the medallions. What? Why? Them's painful memories, Captain. They'll help remind you both the good and bad, not just the bad. Huh. That's... That ain't a bad point. Alright, Captain. Thanks. Okay. Well, that was fast. Oh, but of course we only buried medallions, not corpses. We just left our corpses out here? Didn't we? No. I suppose we buried medallions and corpses? Nothing here. Not too surprising. Yeah, we really didn't need uh, too much of a uh, preparation to deal with this. We really didn't need any crap. It was just a waste of time. Let's get the hell out. Wait. These are the only quests I got left. Which lead to Byzantium, Byzantium, and Byzantium. And I can only go to Byzantium. So I guess we're going to Byzantium. <laughs> but should I take Nyoka? I feel like uh, Ellie, most of all. Maybe, no, no, Ellie, definitely Ellie is getting ignored quite a lot. Of course, Sam. Sam gets ignored the most. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some mission. Wait, where am I? That's not where I wanted to be. Uh, we can drink. Actually, I would probably should consider a trading sometime soon. So, Terra 2, a Byzantium. We are now in orbit above Byzantium, Captain. Yeah, Terra 2. Oh, look at that. So, Harlow was rottener than weak old Borst. Big surprise. Oh, look at that. Ellie has a mission, seemingly. Since we're in Byzantium, there's something I've been meaning to do. What's that? I haven't actually talked to my folks in a while. Shocking, right? Anyway, it's probably about time I paid them a visit. Given the dangerous life I lead, they've got to be worried sick. Funny, you don't strike me as the type who keeps in touch. No, no, no of course. Not just let me know how I can help. I have a feeling that despite her... All the jokes she makes... Uh, she's more sensitive than she pretends to be. Why do you don't strike me as a type who keeps in touch? Which brings us to where we are today. Several messages and a few years <laughs> late. See, I'm originally from Byzantium. Born and raised. I know that probably comes as a big surprise. Actually, I can see it. But I worked so hard! I dropped the accent, picked up a swagger, developed a taste for Spacer's Choice. 
What's the problem? You try a little too hard. You gotta put forth a little more effort if you want to pass for real scum. That's the... You try too hard. Huh. Well, I bet they won't know the difference. <laughs> I bet they'll barely recognize me. I don't see why you can't go to see them when it's convenient. I'm proud of you, Ellie. Of course you should reconnect with your parents. Reconnect is a strong <laughs> word. And, uh, I was thinking you'd come too. Is that so? Alright, we'll go. Great! And when we get there, draw out your rough edges a bit. If you've got an outfit you haven't washed in a while, maybe one with some blood stains, <laughs> wear that one. <laughs> what? Oh, and help yourself to the good snacks and put your feet on the coffee table. Mother hates that. <laughs> I get the idea, Ellie. Well, it's almost like you want me on my worst behavior. That's the idea. Anything else? I take it you got something to say about Harlow? What? What did I tell you? His down with the man shtick was just an act. No one who yammers that much means half of it. Mm. Don't, don't sound too excited. That was Felix's friend. Obviously not. <laughs> and better for Felix to know that now rather than become the next Trask. Yeah. Just because Harlow turned out to be a cook, it doesn't mean everyone's like that. Don't get all mushy on me now. Come on, what did we just learn? People look out for their own interests. It's a fundamental law of nature, same as gravity and conservation of motion. Yes, but their own interest could be the interest of others as well. They can, you know, like we are together, like in a ship, shipmates, you know, it's good for us both. I know what you're saying, but that's not exactly how it works. Not quite. Even to that, but yeah, I mean, what she's saying that people are inherently selfish. That's not exactly uh, wrong. Many times people are doing even uh, uh, things that help others for self or for for reasons that make them feel good. But. That might not matter too much what their motivation is. Ultimately, that's that's a good thing in in humans. That you know that you do things for others because it makes you feel good. Amen to that. You can live your life thinking the worst of everyone, except we've created the artificial gravity. Amen to that. See, this is what I like about you. You may not be from here, but you fit right in. You're not helping the scientist because you think that crackpot will save the colony. Why not? Yeah, I'm... Fuck. Uh... No, but that's not the point. Well, he might. I'm not naive. You're right. The point is that self-interest is like self-pleasure. No one wants to admit it, but everyone has a hand in it. Enough about Harlow, though. Anything else? Yeah, but, like, self-interest and self-pleasure only goes so far, in a way. Like, okay. Like, you get your own stuff, but after that, like, what are you gonna pursue? <sighs> you have something to say about chasing down? The dimethyl sulfoxide. I sure hope you negotiated for a raise with this Phineas guy. <laughs> Why do you say that? Ever notice how this job gets bigger and more dangerous every time he calls in? He's asking a lot, Captain. That's true. Makes me wonder what your angle is. Phineas is trying to be good for the colony and I want to help. He claims... I don't know. I've just been going along with him for now. He's paying. 
Vinny has rescued me from the hope. The least I can do is help him see this through, I suppose. That's one way of looking at it. Another is that he pulled you out of hibernation without your say-so and got you to do his dirty work. Besides, none of this is your mess, so why go dirtying your hands with it? If Halcyon goes down, we all do. I'll do what I can do to fix it. And also, we're just having fun. I don't know, because it's the right thing to do. Again, I'm not... I don't tend to play like the blind uh, good characters. I'm more of a neutral. I'm kind of... I, I, I'm kind of usually like an Ellie-like character. Except without maybe the troubled past. Not really a... Not really a... Pretend. Like, it seemingly is for Ellie. Uh, I haven't thought about it that way. Maybe you're right. If Halcyon goes down, we all do. I'll do what I can to fix it. Guess I hadn't looked at it that way. Still, Phineas isn't your only option. The board's put a bounty on his head, and they've got more than enough bits to pay it. I've got no love for the corporations, but they know how to take care of their people. The ones at the top, anyway. I don't trust the corporations. Uh, I don't... I'm not gonna hold it against you that you bring, bring it up, but like... Yeah, we're not gonna sell out to our friends for... I don't know. For jump change. I'm not going to become some corporate lackey. Don't think of it as being a lackey. Think of it as doing a job and getting paid really, really well. I know you want to save the day, but don't forget to look after yourself. No one else out here is going to. You're wrong about that. Hey, I'm not trying to piss on your bonfire. But you ought to hear this from someone, and it might as well be an ally with a financial interest in your well-being. Anything else? What can you tell me about Byzantium? It's like one of those stuffy art gallery pieces. Looks okay from far off, but once you get close, you realize it's just some mismatched shit everyone's agreed to overpay for. Even the bribes are overpriced. What did you leave? The real question is why didn't I leave sooner? There's all these invisible rules and everyone spends all their energy just trying not to break them. What do you mean? I was a top-tier surgeon, but I could hardly open a pack of gauze without ten people signing off first. So you had to deal with red tape? What of it? That's no way to live. People call Byzantium the jewel of Halcyon, but really, it's just paste. Everything's polished in bureaucracy. Take a close look and you'll see it's deader than anywhere else in the colony. That's interesting. So, you got driven crazy by the, the rules and like whatever. The bureaucracy can be like that can be suffocating for sure. I need the lay of the land. Anything I should know? Don't trust anyone. Don't touch anything. And whatever you do, don't show your teeth when you smile. Why not? People are extremely competitive about cosmetic dentistry. It can get ugly. What? Must have been interesting growing up there. Interesting like a colonoscopy. I trained as a surgeon. More my folks idea than mine, but I made the best of it. Sounds like there's a butt to this story. Lots of them, unfortunately. I even sculpted a few. Turns out Byzantines are more concerned with having square shoulders and a good profile than, well, anything else. Enough about Byzantium. That's what I've been saying. <laughs> nah, let's go. So, I need to get her ready for the mission. Somehow. So, you put that on. That's a decent helmet. That's actually my helmet. 
And we're gonna replace Nyoka's gear for this and this maybe. And Ellie is going to wear these very, very cool stuffs. And that's it! And Ellie also can. When Ellie's in the party, any damage that would kill you instead heals a small amount of health. This effect is a long cooldown. I'm not super into that. We can go for armor, I guess. And also, Ellie needs a good weapon. She's using a decent weapon. But Nyoka can give her a better one. Ellie, not that one, I can't find it, <gasps> okay there it is, good gun, you use that, uh, Perve uh, yep. Perveti uses one, wait, I'm struggling, struggling, yeah, Parvati, uh using the best gun right now, and I think we're good to go, oh shit, we're not good to go, we're definitely not good to go. I need to rest. I need to drink and eat. And after that, we head out. No. Mm. Uh, I'm looking for... Like that. Um, we need another drink. That's good enough. Let's go. Ali and uh, Pavetti, come on. Where are you? Chop, chop. Uh, yep. Yeah. No, not Nyoka. We're taking Ali here. And everyone else just stays inside. It's all good. It's kind of pointless to get uh, armor for everybody. Because... I would need to replace it anyway. So it's, it doesn't really make sense. So... Hmm. I wonder how big is Byzantium. Because right now, it, we only will explore a little part of it. What? What happened? What this frame drop? Okay. Keep him quiet, Cap. Don't worry. So, this is a main quest. A visit Ellie's parents in Byzantium. Meet with Phineas' contact. I guess we can do this first. Do you mind? I'm meeting someone. You are? Uh, yeah, you're meeting me. Phineas sent me. Shh. No names, okay? The Phoenix is a wanted man, and the board has eyes everywhere <laughs> in Byzantium. Don't call him the Phoenix. I want to be the Phoenix. Let's get this over with. You have information for me? Yeah. You're looking to make contact with Minister... Uh, Magpie, right? I should warn you, it won't be easy. He spends most of his time in this estate, which is heavily guarded. There's got to be a way to catch the Minister some place less protected. Afraid not. He almost never leaves his home, and his guards never leave him. Can't say I blame him. It's scary out of doors. <laughs> I mean, can you even count how many times we've been shot at? What work specialists, huh? Our mutual friend is really branching out. Uh, can you get me into the minister's estate? Whoa, I'm not one of your B and E specialists. I just provide intelligence. Okay. 
So, what can you tell me? Some of the guards hang around Billingsley's house of inebriation between shifts. That place is still open? I used to study there during medical school. Maybe you could do some reconnaissance there. You know, swipe a key while nobody's looking. Okay, thanks for the tip. Just remember, you didn't hear it from me. How exactly did you get involved in all this, anyway? I've always been fascinated by birds. If you ever research Earth species, there are thousands of them. So colorful and distinct. Here we got 11 flavors of terror rays and not much else. That kind of variety? I mean, gosh. Seems almost impossible. The other thing about birds, though, is their environmental indicators. When they die off, it's a sign that something's wrong. Exactly. I started thinking about everything we see around Halcyon, and all the things we don't see. Like what? For starters, you rarely come across anyone living in Byzantium who wasn't born here, even though we get ships in all the time. Trust me, anyone with a lick of sense gets out of here as soon as possible. But most people don't. In fact, most people stay exactly where they start. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Not really. That's... Not really. And then there's the way nothing gets fixed. There used to be a suggestion box around here. People would drop ideas in. Nothing ever came of them, of course. Seems pretty normal, actually. <laughs> I mean, most people just stay where, where they're born. Like, some people just... Uh, uh, don't even go... Even like, I don't know. I think I heard stories of people who didn't even leave where they, their their place of birth, like like ten kilometers, some shit like that. Of course, like in this modern day and age, that's uh, less common. And of course, um, spaceships and whatnot. So it seems like it would be less common. But it's like a whole planet. We are talking about Byzantium. Or maybe not a whole planet, but a whole city. And would you want to go to the smaller, dirty settlements? I don't know. I don't know if you would want to go there. The chance of dying is high, and you know, not like you can you can just go back and, and do a trip to Earth, and uh, that that's, that takes forever because uh, the colony ships come here and like they spend a lifetime. You know, if a, a trip back to Earth and back would take a significant amount of time, like decades more than decades maybe over a hundred years it's pretty normal actually sure that part is that's why they install shredders in those boxes after the all fuck? but one day the shredder broke no one came to fix it and since it wasn't working we didn't have anywhere to file our complaints so you can imagine how messy things got I bet your repair folks couldn't find parts. Back in Edgewater, I'd have to take something apart just to put another thing back together. Might have been the paperwork. Here, you have to append forms to your forms, and law help you if there's a single dash out of place. Wow. The whole point with the feedback forms and the complaint forms and whatever is that there's an illusion that it's useful. You can't just have a shredder in it, you know? You can't just throw it in the trash, you know? You just ask people to place it on the table next to the trash, and when they leave, you throw it in the trash, right? That's the whole point, you know? They go away and they just, you know, they vent their frustration on these suggestions and whatever Instead of like, you know, shit gonna, gotta change. Instead of they doing something about it. Or just taking more of an initiative. They just write the paper or write some feedback. And they don't do jack shit and nothing ever gets done. And it's a joke. It doesn't work, I guess. Of course, there could be uh, exceptions. But yeah, that's kind of how it goes usually. Regular tragedy. If if you want things to change, uh, uh, you gotta change things. You gotta affect things that other people are care about. You know, like you know, you got government 
Like, you write feedback, what's gonna happen? Nothing. Like, if people stop paying taxes, like, imagine, like, the entire population or, like, majority stop paying taxes, holy shit, they would care. If people just go out there and, like, I don't know, uh, like, dick around for a few hours and, like, hey, we are just doing our thing, we don't like it, and, like, go back home, it's a fucking joke. They're getting laughed at. And I guess it would need a majority for uh, stuff to really work. <clears throat> That's kind of white stuff, I guess. Anyway, uh, regular tragedy. <laughs> so my point is that in order to for things to get changed, uh, those I, it it needs to affect those people who are who are also making the change happen. You know, if they if they are not getting affected, like you know, like forms and shit like that, it doesn't this doesn't work? You know, ah, <sighs> regular tragedy. At first, management put up an out of order sign, but that just seemed to worry people, like they were advertising something wasn't working. They eventually took the whole suggestion box sign down so that people didn't have any expectations about it. But they never fixed it, never replaced it. Doesn't that seem odd to you? I think you're just way too caught up with this suggestion box. No, that's... Most places don't even have a fucking suggestion box, like... You know, they wouldn't even pretend to throw it in the trash. You know, that no, that's how things go around Halcyon, in case you didn't notice. If you ask me, the suggestion box was pretty useless to begin with. <laughs> it was obviously just a filled with trash, you know? Just to keep the masses sedated. I don't know how else people are supposed to complain about things they can't change, but that's not the point. The whole episode made me wonder, if they can't fix something as simple as a suggestion box, what else aren't they fixing? After a while, I got connected with our mutual friend and started using my position here to feed him information when I could. That's it, really. Okay, so you basically use the suggestion box. That doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the government is not capable of doing stuff. It just means that they are uh, unwilling. But, you know, if you use that as an excuse to finally exercise some critical thinking, I'm more power to you. Looks like uh, I've got work to do. <laughs> okay. Interesting. A mystery. Could be there's more to it. Speak to the minister guards. Find and kill Evia Chartrand. Visit Ali's parents in Byzantium. Find Parvati fancy clothes. Maybe we should start with that. Are you still tinkering with that? It's not gonna fix Go this way. Oh, oh, this is multiple level. Not as multiple. Actually, I need to go down. Street access, retirees. Corporate Sentinel. Move along. Okay. So we gotta go down to the street level. <clears throat> this place may be bigger than it seems. Not huge, but definitely bigger than Scylla. Elevator music. Wow. Why are the elevators just so trash? Seems like straight out of like the early 20th century. Right? Uh, wow, okay. Why can't something exciting happen around here for once? Nothing wrong with stability. It means everything's running like clockwork. Don't you ever want to wish fun?
Okay, we can't go down into the hey, sewers. You. Yeah, you. The million bit smile. How'd you like to make it worth ten million? What? Kid, you got presence. Natural magnetism. Know what I mean? Uh I like where this is going. Tell you what. You're gonna like it a whole lot more once we start talking bits. Listen, um, you got an agent? Some kind of representation? <laughs> Does working for a mad scientist count? A mad scientist? Guy sounds like he's moonlighting. Here's some free advice. If you want to make it in this business, you gotta work with professionals. Listen, you got a real special quality, raw energy. I see you in pictures, kid. What? Just tell me what you're offering. I'm making a feature, Space Pirates of Moros Prime. It's gonna be a hit. But we still need a star. And I think you got the chops. Ah! Captain! You're gonna be in pictures! Already got an entourage, huh? Way to get ahead of the game. So what do you say? You ready for the chance of a lifetime? What? Ah, <laughs> uh, this seems a little odd, you know? So, yeah, I totally made it in the filming industry now. Like, whoa, just some random guy on the street. Okay, this is odd, but you know, I can defend myself. I'm in. Terrific! We're holding auditions at the studio. Head to Odeon Pictures and take the elevator. You're going all the way to the top, baby! Okay. Attend the audition. Sure. That's cool. Can't go in there. Fancy Cleo's pipe can't. A lot of places are locked. Is that supposed to be a model of the system? Not super accurate. I once treated a lady who got her hand caught in the gears. Idiot was more worried about her rings than her fingers. <laughs> but it looks cool. <sighs> Rococo's decor. Oh. Some vending machines. We can actually use this. Oh, fuck. No, no, no. That's trash. Why is it trash? Okay, that's a decent helmet. But mostly it's trash. Do I need that decent helmet? Ah, that's... Yeah, that's better than what I got. Let us buy it. I can use it. Not that one. It looks like this... <laughs> it looks identical. I can do some selling. So this is gonna be... Uh... Sure... Okay. I don't know. It's not great. I don't use the gloop gun. Soft breaker, spacious choice. Okay. Rearranger. Looks like crap. That should be decent. So we sell that. Um, we might keep that. It's trash. We need the lockpick helmet. That's garbage. Stout skills. It's trash. I can keep the rest. Actually, you know, tech skills, you know, this is trash. And this is fine. And sell the junk. This should be good enough. Let's see the other vendor. Oh, this is a little disappointing. So here we can buy clothes. Whoa! It's closed! Okay, too. Break in or what? No, no, no. Am I wrong about it? Mm, no, 
not super impressive DPS. So, we can go that way as well. How do we get in? Oh. Here? I've always loved that sculpture. It's an honor. Can you say that? Oh. But Betty? Whatever you, you want, it's on me. Shit. Let me take a closer look at you. I gotta start uh, practicing my intimidation. Ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh. Don't speak. Hold that posture for a moment while I admire you. You have a natural contraposto, my dear. The way you rest your weight against your hip suggests a certain rugged charisma possessed only by the mighty primal and the well-traveled spacer. Splendid. I love it. Right. You can tell all that by the way I'm standing. That's me, rugged and well-traveled. Ah, oh, Celeste, you've done it again. I knew from the moment I laid eyes on you that I'd found my muse. I'm Celeste Jolicoeur, and you, my dear, are exactly what Byzantium needs. What's that? They're trying to sell me something. <laughs> I'm an artist, darling, not a tweed merchant. I don't sell things. I pollinate the world with art. That was a yes. I'm working on a new line of clothing that will shock this city to its core, and I'd like your help. What do you say, my dear? Care to make history with me? What? Am I gonna get paid? What do you have in mind? When I look at you, I see the very embodiment of everything the walls of Byzantium were built to keep out. Wow. Making an so outfit rude. worthy of you won't be easy. I'll need your help gathering the right materials. All right, I'll help you out. Marvelous! You and I are going to wake this city up like a cold splash of wine to the face. What I need is a survey of the outside world. What does the common laborer wear? How do the wild-eyed madmen of Monarch dress themselves? I've heard rumors, but I require samples. Also, I expect you to model for me. What's the benefit of seeing me wear it? I got a lot, bunch of crap with me. My dear... Fashion is a performance art. An outfit without a body is like an instrument without a player. I'll need you to model for me the following. The apparel of an iconoclast, the armor of a marauder, and a full ensemble of spacer gear. Helmet included. And when I say spacer gear, I mean an outfit worn by real spacers. None of that garbage spacers choice pedals. You have the bearing and demeanor of a born model. You're going to absolutely murder this job. Let's see what I can do. Fabulous! I can't wait to see what you dredge up. What? My engineer is going on a date and she needs a fine outfit. You don't gotta be so forward about my reasons, Captain. <laughs> Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. Uh, I am no such thing, ma'am. <laughs> Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back-of-the-envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright. There. I can cover 6,000 bits. Uh, persuasion. She's an engineer. You think she can afford that? She needs to impress her true love. Love? That's the ultimate luxury, darling. Love. <laughs> oh, gracious me. I don't get why that's funny, ma'am. <laughs> oh, my cherub. Who woos for love anymore? That's so... Precious. All right, Captain. Here is the absolute best I can do for you. 
3,000 bits. Hold up, did you actually measure her for this outfit? I, I didn't see any measuring tape. Darling, do I look like an amateur? I read her measurements by eye. And don't you ask, because they're no one's business but her own. What? She's also in heavy armor. You seem to be pretty good at this, if you can get, get her measurements. I guess we can swing 3,000 bits. There are some things I simply cannot skimp on, darling. Such a lovely young lady deserves the best. Now stand back. Back, back. I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. Uh... Where am I supposed to find spacer gear? If I were an enterprising spacer in need of a wardrobe, I'd probably head to the Groundbreaker. Uh, can I buy something? What? I, I, I want to initiate to a trade and do work. What can I do for you, darling? Can I buy something? Not worked. Okay, she's actually selling almost close to usable armors. Unfortunately, they are not. Uh, this counts as the hat, for sure. Not just extra. Can we use this as extra? Persuasion. Let's buy this. I'm kind of curious. Come on. Oh yeah. Suspected as much. Yeah, whatever. Actually, hacking, hacking glasses is not a bad idea. So, even like that, it's okay. Well, I guess you have your dress. Speak to Parvati. Oh, can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Well, I guess that's everything then. After all this time, I can... I just have to actually do it now. Y you know, there's, there's a part Jun Lei's been looking for to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. Uh, it could be one of those dates that, you know, despite all this preparation, they're just gonna, you know, bond over, like, repairing some crap. You know, it's some very casual. I, I think that would have been the best in the first place. Her body, making every little thing perfect won't change Jun Lei's feelings. I know. For a while, it, it felt like everything I did was a little bit of help. And it meant I didn't have to ask her to be mine. Not yet. Not for real. Next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, this is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you've done. Lively up! But... What to go for? I have no idea. Do I just pump science and hacking? I don't know. 
I basically got to the point where I kind of have everything. Look at this engineering, 100. Medical, 88. Science is kind of low. Hacking is kind of low. Tinkering cost for science weapon is capped. I can also just get a little bit of extra damage. Science doesn't seem like an amazing choice. Hacking also doesn't seem like an amazing choice. But I do think I may need to... Well, I definitely need to increase hacking. If I... If I wanna use 100 hacks. How much I can push up hacking? That would be good to know. So I can use the glasses. That's gonna be 10. And I also can use the tech skills, armor. No, 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 it, it's not a tech skill, it's a, it's a stealth skill. I, I tend to mix that up. And this pushes hacking to a 75, which is respectable. We can also do some drugs, and that's gonna push it up. Wait, what influences hacking? Of course, intelligence and charm for some reason. So we can push up hacking quite a bit. So this is 10 points if we, if we do some drugs. So I can push up hacking to... Wait, where is it? Yeah, 85. Not quite 90. Not quite. But 85 is pretty okay. And I'm not sure how if this is really worth it. Like 85 seems pretty good. I also gotta spend the perk. I can make my TTD slightly more. Uh, no companions in the party only. Dialogue skills. It just doesn't really matter. Boom, headshot. Headshot kills explode, but it needs to be a headshot kill as well. No penalty for moving, but I usually just stay in place, so that's kind of pointless. The problem with confidence is is I have all my shots dealing 1% critical chance already. So why the fuck would I invest in confidence which is only off to kill? It makes no sense. And this this is like this is dumb. When you have 25% health, you are already just running away. Maybe health restore per kill can be interesting. If it's a tough fight, I, I guess that could be useful. Or we go with slow the world. So, increase the TTD, but that doesn't really matter. Maybe half restore per kill could be good. Let's do that. And skills. That's either science or I just try to bring up hacking to a level where uh, I can just uh, deal with anything. It would need to be brought up only by 15 to allow for maximum hacking. I just uh, go with tinkering. Which would allow me to tinker for super cheap and also increase the damage I'm dealing. I don't think we're gonna need super high hacking. So this is gonna increase. Seems like it's gonna, at the end, increase my damage by 30%. And that's about it. Maybe science is gonna come in handy. It's gonna be checked somewhere along the lines. Just go back to our regular gear. That's good for fighting. Engineering is uh I look at this. Like 15 doubled. <laughs> Engineering is pretty easy to bump. It's also not super important. Oh, I 
Can't go there. I love Byzantium. Where else are you going to find art, culture, working toilets? Well, office citizen. Yeah. Oh, there's a shop here? Oh. I didn't see that. This is the bar! It's kind of fancy bar. Actually, we should probably mark something else. Model outfits for Celeste. Uh, while wearing a suit of armor and a headpiece from the following sets. Iron class, Marauder and Spacer. Uh... Okay, does this count? Do you, do you like this? What I'm, what I'm wearing right now? It's called actually dominating. I can't wait to see those outfits. The space. What can I do for you, darling? How about this outfit? Oh, I think it needs to be done in order. For you? I think it needs to be done in order. It needs to be spacer or maybe, maybe not in order, but you need specific gear. Which is a little annoying. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this mission. It's not even like... It's not even pointing anywhere. I just need to buy clothes. It's kind of annoying. I don't know. Talk to Parvati. Visit Ellie's parents. Uh, yeah, they are a little farther away. Uh, that could be somewhere else. Yeah, whatever. Attend the audition. This is for the movie. We'll do that. And we gotta talk with the guards as well. Or just steal their keycard. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.